The original purpose of pawn shops was to create a way for those in financial need to get extra help. Back in the day, you could go to a pawn shop and trade in an item you owned for money. You would then use that money to help yourself get out of your dire financial situation. Once you were back on your feet, you could go to the pawn shop and buy back your item for the exact amount of money you received for it. Today, pawn shops are much different. When trading in your item, you get very little money compared to the object's value. If you want to buy the item back, you will pay much more than you receive for the item. The original intention of the pawn shop has shifted dramatically since its creation. There's been a drift in the hearts of people from seeking to help others to seeking to make a profit. The truth is that all of our hearts are prone to drift. We can drift from a life of loving God to a life of sin. That's why the author of Proverbs shows us how to prevent this drift. He points out four ways to avoid drifting in our own lives. They involve the heart, mouth, eyes, and feet. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 to 27 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. It is key that he starts by talking about the heart. Think about our physical hearts. If we have a bad heart, then the rest of our body is in jeopardy. If the heart quits working, then everything else quits working. You cannot have a dead heart and a healthy ear. The same is true with our spiritual hearts. If the heart is good, then what flows out is good. However, if the heart is bad, what flows out of our heart will be bad. Guarding your heart can be challenging because the heart is attacked from so many different angles. This world and its pleasures are after your heart. Satan is after your heart. And our own sinful flesh wants to attack and fill our hearts with sin. When we're having a hard day or going through tough times, it can be easy for our hearts to drift away. The next area that we need to be careful of is our mouths. We are to put away our crooked speech. Let's think about the physical world again. Our mouth actually reveals what is going on in our hearts. If there's something wrong with our hearts, we will use our mouths to express that pain. The same is true on the spiritual level. The words and actions that flow from our mouths reveal where our heart is actually at. We may look spiritual from the outside. However, our words will reveal our spirituality. Putting away crooked speech does not simply mean not cussing. Putting away crooked speech means putting away all talk that dishonors God. If we're not careful, our mouths will drift into gossiping about others, using our words to put down others and talking pridefully about ourselves. The author in the book of Proverbs also talks about the eyes. We are to keep our spiritual eyes directly forward. Think about your physical eyes. If you're driving and you don't keep your eyes directly forward, you can get in some real trouble. Some of the worst crashes are because our eyes are focused on something else, such as a phone or somebody in the back seat. Our spiritual eyes do the same thing. When we turn our eyes away from the Lord, we are prone to stumble. Now, the final area mentioned in our passage of Scripture is all to do with your feet. When we focus on keeping our feet on the path, we move in the right direction. If you're going for a walk on a trail and you decide to get off the trail, you're much more likely to get lost. However, if you focus on keeping your feet on the trail, the path for you is laid out. Yet again, the same is true spiritually. If you follow the moral path God has laid out for you, you will not stumble. However, as you seek your own path, it becomes so much easier to stumble. 
with our heart, mouth, eyes, and feet guiding us, how do we prevent the natural drift that our soul wants to take? It all comes down to our focus. We must focus our whole being on Jesus Christ. Our heart, mouth, eyes, and feet must be all set to follow Jesus Christ. In the book of Philippians, Paul talks about running the race of life. He runs by focusing on Jesus. That may sound a little unpractical. However, he gives us a practical example of what it means to focus on Jesus. He says in Philippians 3, verse 17, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. According to Paul, we prevent the natural drift of our physical and spiritual bodies from sinning by looking at and imitating those who follow Jesus around us. Who are you looking to for an example of someone who follows Jesus? Of course, we should look to God's Word to see examples of what it looks like to follow Jesus. We will see the life of Jesus and His followers and emulate that. However, it shouldn't stop there. We should find other believers that follow Jesus and learn from them. Your body will naturally drift into sin. Proverbs tells us that our heart will not want to stay vigilant. Our mouth will want to use crooked speech. Our eyes will want to look to the side and our feet will want to get off the path. While our physical and spiritual body wants to lead us astray, we must take time daily to focus on Jesus. When we do this, our hearts will be changed by the grace of our Lord Jesus. I want to tell you two things. The first thing will be what the devil loves and the second will be what the devil hates. The devil loves to make you fearful. The devil loves to introduce fear into the life of a believer. And let me tell you why. Fear is the opposite of faith. The Word of God calls us to live by faith and trust that God is in complete control. That's why we're told to not be anxious about anything. We're told not to worry, not to let our hearts be troubled over and over again, and this is because God wants us to live by faith and trust Him in every moment for every need. But the devil, he wants the complete opposite for you and I. He doesn't want us to live by faith, so he introduces fear. And when you begin to live with the spirit of fear in your life, you begin to go against God's Word and you're filled with anxiety. You're worrying about what you will eat and drink and, of course, your heart is troubled. This is the damage that the spirit of fear brings. Look at what the Bible calls us to do. The Bible calls us to be courageous. Fear is the opposite of that. The Bible calls us to be bold. Fear is the opposite. The Bible calls us to trust God. Fear is the opposite because you doubt that God can be trusted with whatever you're worried about. This is why the devil loves to introduce fear into people's lives. However, let me tell you this. If there is one thing the devil can't stand, it's a man or woman who rejects the spirit of fear. A person who is not intimidated by what they see, but someone who is governed by the Word of God. The devil is no match for a believer who dares to believe that nothing is impossible with God. The devil cannot win when he comes up against a believer who dares to believe the Word of God. Some of our greatest blessings come to us when we dare to believe. Some of our biggest breakthroughs only happen once we dare to believe. There's no length that God is not willing to go to, to not only meet, but exceed your expectations if you are willing to believe that He can do what He says He can do. The Amplified Translation of Psalm 34, verse 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. How blessed, fortunate, prospered, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in Him. So your medical report may say one thing, but God's Word says, But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. 
The facts may be that you do not have the training, the education, or the skills for that position. But God's Word says in Psalm 91 verse 17 that, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. When circumstances are against you, trust in God's promises for your life. When you're confronted by fear, that is the time you must say, God, I believe you are bigger than what I see in front of me. You are bigger than the facts in this world. I don't see a way, but I know you can still make a way. Dear friend, be of the mind that says, I don't need to have all the answers because I know the one who knows all of the answers. I don't need to know what the plan is because I know the planner, the God who orchestrates everything. I don't need to know the why if I know the one. I don't need to know the how because I know him. So hear me today. Dare to believe in God and he will not let you down. Throughout your lifetime, you're going to come across challenges and moments that will test you. There will come a time when you are tested and it's in that season whereby you have to decide to hold on to something. You either hold on to Jesus or you hold on to friends and family members, peers and colleagues. You either hold on to Jesus or you hold on to every word the doctor says or the expert opinion of man. I encourage you to choose the Lord. Hold on to Jesus Christ before you listen to the worldly wisdom of those who claim to know it all. It's only when you dare to go against the expectations of the world and stand with Jesus Christ that you can truly experience a life with victory. So in the midst of everything, in the midst of what you're struggling with, God is telling you to believe. Believe in Him because in His Word He has said that He has plans for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Fear has no effect on the believer who stands and says, whatever awaits me in the future, I'm facing it with Jesus. Whatever comes against me, I'll be protected by Jesus because if God is for me, who can stand against me? I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can get to the Father except through Jesus. I believe he is the bread of life. He is the one who can sustain us. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And in him, you will find peace beyond all human understanding. I believe Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the Good Shepherd. I believe he was a healer and a miracle worker when he walked here on this earth. And I also believe that he is still able to do the impossible, even today. I believe he died on a cross for our sins, for my sins. And I believe that he rose back to life after three days and ascended on high. And right now, he is seated on the right side of the Father. Listen to me. In the name of Jesus, there is power. Jesus Christ is the name above every other name. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the risen one, the almighty one. When we speak that name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every sickness has to bow. Every disease has to leave. Every chain has to loose. And so here is my word to you as believers. We should not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should never compromise the word of God so that we can fit into this world. We should not be ashamed of the gospel because the devil in the world, oh, they are aggressively spreading a message of deception. The devil in this world is aggressively trying to lead people away from the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it's time that we as believers of Jesus Christ, it's time for us to stand up and to declare to the world that there is a savior. There is someone who can set you free if you're bound. 
There is a Redeemer, and His name is Jesus Christ. Saints, we should not be ashamed of the gospel, but as Christians, we must stand up and fight for the gospel. We must rise up as sons and daughters of the Most High. Isaiah 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. This is a promise. A promise for those seasons in life when you feel as though you can't get a break. It's a promise that God Almighty will help you. The Lord will come to your aid. He will be your support. He will be your pillar of strength. Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. This is a promise. A promise for us to hold on to in times of weakness. God will give strength to the weary. He will help you to stand when times get tough. He will help you to move forward when it looks like you are about to be overwhelmed. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 tells us, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Jesus goes on to say in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Jesus is telling us to let go of the illusion that we are the ones in control. Because while we are not in control, God is sovereign. He's always in control. While we don't know the future, God is already in the future. While we can't let go of the past, God is already working out your present and your future. The devil is the father of fear, but God is the master of the future. The devil is the warlock of worry, but Jesus is the prince of peace. The devil is the architect of anxiety, but the Holy Spirit is the bringer of comfort. The Lord tells us in Isaiah 41 verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As believers, our lives should not be dictated by fear, but rather by our faith. Our lives should not be crippled by worry, but rather empowered by the Word of God. We must always remember that we are children of the Most High God. We have received the promises of Christ that He will be with us always until the end of time. And so there is no one who can save us because Christ has already saved us. Stress and anxiety won't have the last word because Christ has already had the last word. Fear will not have the final say because Jesus Christ has defeated fear, 